Greg. Good one, Greg. In these four verses, Paul clearly tells the Philippians that he's not perfect and implies that he will not ever be, but that he's working towards it. It is perfection. By forgetting what lies behind and pressing forward to what lies ahead, the upward call of Christ Jesus, he continues his plea that they must stay on track and keep focused on that goal. Last week in verses 1 through 11, Kiko shared that Paul gave his spiritual history. Where's Kiko? There he is. Spiritual history, his uh, past, and declared it all rubbish when compared to Christ. Let me review with you what Paul said earlier in Philippians 4. Although I myself might have confidence even in the flesh, if anyone else has a mind to put confidence in the flesh, I far more. Circumcised, circumcised the eighth day of the nation of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness, which is in the law, found blameless. And in verse 8, it continues, More than that, I count all things to be lost in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them but rubbish, so that I may gain Christ. All of this describes Paul's past pursuits. What I share with you, now Paul, Paul gives his exhortation describing his pursuit of the present time. In verses 12 to 14, we're introduced to Paul the athlete, an example of which is referred to in 1 Corinthians 9, 26. Therefore I run in such a way as not without aim. I box in such a way as not beating the air, just as an athlete in training. In Ephesians 6.12, for the struggle, for our struggle, is not against flesh and blood. That brings to mind wrestling. And then in the passages I get to share here, in Philippians 3.14, I press on towards the goal for the prize. Like a relay runner, pressing on for the baton or stretching towards the finish line. Paul's immense energy for the faith is unmistakable with his word picture of pressing towards the goal, <coughs> which is the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. With all his credentials, Paul still doesn't have it, but he gets it. We begin with verse 12. Not that I have already attained it or have already become perfect, but I press on so that I may lay hold of that for which also I was laid hold of by Christ Jesus. Paul was satisfied with Christ, but not satisfied with his Christian life. A holy dis dissatisfaction is essential for progress in the Christian race. Paul states that he has not obtained it yet. Obtained can be defined as to come into possession, to get, acquire, procure, as through an effort to succeed. What is it? Is it a rock in the road? Is it the spider or the clown in Stephen King's movie? Is it a noun, a pronoun, a he, she, it, animal, vegetable, or the abbreviation for Italy? <laughs> no, it was spoken of earlier in chapter 3, in verses 9b through 11, where Paul tells us, The righteousness which comes from God on the basis of faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being comforted, conformed to his death, in order that I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Paul is referring to Christ's likeness, conformity to Christ. Therefore, Paul has not obtained it. He has not become perfect. Perfect can be defined as being complete, sound, upright, blameless, without sin. In this case, perfect, in verse 12, is pursuing an unattainable goal. This verse 12 uh, dealt a blow to the false doctrine of perfectionism in those days, and which still prevails in some denominations today. In 1 John 1.8, if we say that we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves and the truth is not in us. He says, I press on. 
That's the daily race. And that's the athlete speaking. He presses on to be laid hold of. And where was Paul laid hold of? Damascus Road, where he encountered and was laid hold of by the risen Christ. God met him there, where he turned him away from evil, from evil intent to godly purpose. And once laid hold of by Christ Jesus, Paul's goal became the same as Christ had for him. And there's more good stuff. Paul's message continues in verse 13. Brethren, I do not regard myself as having laid hold of it yet. But one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead. That verse is underscored with the word brethren. I do not... Brethren... I'm sorry with brethren. Paul is telling the Philippians, listen up, pay attention. Again, Paul says that he has not yet laid a hold of it, to emphasize that even he continues to pursue it daily. When he says, but one thing I do, Paul has reduced the sanctification process to a simple and clear goal of doing one thing. This shows his deliberateness in his pursuit. Forgetting what lies behind God never forgets, but he does not hold our past against us. So neither should we. We must not be influenced or affected by the past. Break the power of the past by living for the future, pressing on towards the goal. An unsaved person is controlled by his past, but a Christian running the race looks towards the future. Paul reaches forward as a runner, straining for a baton, pressing towards that it that lies ahead. In verse 14, he presses on with the message when he says, I press on towards the goal of, for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. The press on is working at being Christ-like here and now. I press. In verse 12, and here in verse 14, translates to I follow after. It conveys an idea of intense endeavor. The Greeks use I press to describe a hunter eagerly, eagerly uh, pursuing his prey. A man does not become a winning athlete by li listening to lectures, by watching movies, reading books, or cheering at games. He must become a winning athlete by getting in the game determined to win. The same zeal that Paul had when he persecuted the churches, he displayed in serving Christ. Wouldn't it be great if Christians put as much determination in their spiritual life as they do in their fishing, golfing, or other pastimes? What about yeah. you? <laughs> we're, we're CJ when you need it. <laughs> now, the prize is the upward call of God in Christ Jesus, which is the time when God calls each believer up to heaven and into his presence, which will be the moment of receiving the prize, which has been the unattainable goal in earthly life. The daily race or pursuit of Christ's likeness is the hard road of sanctification. <clears throat> now, we've just rounded turn four, and we're in the home stretch now. Verses 15 and 16 let us, therefore, as many are, as are perfect, have this attitude. And, in if any, and if in anything you have a different attitude, God will reveal that also to you. However, let us keep living by the same standard which we have attained. Paul wasn't in the spiritual race alone. It included all Christians described here by the phrase, as many as are perfect. Remember back in verse 12? Paul used the word perfect. In that case, that's the unattainable goal. Glorification before Christ. And here in verse 15, perfect is that of a mature Christian still in the race. Every true Christian must have this attitude, the same as Paul had. The Greek definition for have this attitude literally means to think this way, be intent on this, set one, one's mind on this, or continually think like this. It's all the same thing. Uh, but the word discipline comes to mind. 
but not all the believers should have mat would have matured or shared the strength and unrelenting focus Paul had in pursuing the prize. Those weaker brothers who have different attitude who have a different attitude and fail to heed Paul's message will hear the same message from God through his word, his spirit, and through chastening. God will do whatever it takes to bring believers to the recognition of their need to pursue the price, the prize of Christ-likeness. He used the word, however, which can have the meaning of one more thing or a final thought. Paul reiterates that they, that they keeping, keep living by that same standard to which we have attained. Keep li living means to line up or to follow in line. To use a metaphor of a race, they must keep running in their lane. In closing, let me summarize what we've learned together. Paul tells, tells them that any past success or failures are forgotten. Don't let your past affect your future. He reaches forward as a runner strains for the baton, presses towards the goal, that it, that lies ahead. <clears throat> He is focused as an athlete on one prize, the upward call of Christ. He commands the brothers, the believing Philippians, to have the same attitude. And any believers that are still struggling, press on, and God will reveal. However, he warns the believers to remain unwavering in the walk they have attained. Are you, <clears throat> are you ready to forget what lies behind you? Commit to pressing on to that upward call of Christ, I am, and I need you brothers to keep me accountable. When I received this assignment, it was basically unknown to me, although I know I'd read over it many times. Having been blessed with the challenge of going deep and coming up with the treasure, I will never read our blessed word the same again. Let me leave you with this last thought. At the foot of one of the Swiss Alps is a marker honoring a man who fell to his death attempting the climb. The marker gives his name and this brief epitaph. He died climbing. The epitaph of every Christian should be that they died climbing the upward path towards the prize of Christ-likeness. Get back, get back. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. It was really nice. I appreciate that um, you kept the same theme from the beginning, from your introduction. I, I it was about sports, and um, even up to the last second, I, I think you you were able to to bring a clear. Um, Example of, of that kind of uh, sporty um, idea, and, and I, I thought you related it very well to the to the text. Thank you. Well. I like the opening where you gave your you know what your passion is you know, in sailing, and that really kind of added to um, the root of the whole thing, describing the passion that Paul had for attaining his goal. I think that was really a great thing. Thanks. To um, add to that, I thought that, that that opening just took my mindset and put me right into seeing the passion and getting me prepared for the passion uh, that you were trying to show us through Paul here. So I thought that was really good. Immediately I was focused and I was looking for for that. Hope you found what you were looking for. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I thought you did a great job. Yeah, the end where you uh, you use that analogy of climbing the hill was it's a really great analogy. The idea that uh, you just got to keep plunging until you're done. Yeah. I like how you reached ahead and brought us into what you were going to say by what was said ahead mm -hmm. to prepare us for that, and then your references that also opened doors for what else you were saying, and everything just. Work together great. Great job. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Did a good job with the review, bringing us back to Pico and, and 
in your word studies. You did a really good job with that. There's a lot of words that a person could look at and go, well, what's that? You did some great word studies, and, and then the way you summarized at the end, and just an outstanding job, Gary. Loved it. No more stones? If you weren't pulled in before, you were definitely pulled in when you asked the question, um, do you pursue Christ in the same way that you pursue some of the other things in life? Yeah. Especially fishing. Right. Um, I had to. I had to I put like that. The I knew that was coming. Yeah. But I also had. But I also added golf for some others. Right. Well, uh, the only thing more humbling than Christ's love is probably trying to fish golf. No. Uh, I really think that this was something that showed that you can do this. Yeah. And, I mean, from beginning to end, you. And I know it was. I know it was a struggle for you, like you even admitted. But you, you persevered through. You pressed on. You know, according to your own talk, and you studied the passage well. You got, you know, you got to the point of the passage. You really, uh, you really laid it out in such a way where it flowed. It flowed well, and. Um, I just think this is a, this is a, I don't want to, I don't want to be so dramatic, but I think in some respects it's a beginning for you, for your pressing on, because I think you have, the, you have great insights into the scripture that you know you can find now, and, and I think the Lord's going to use you in that way, and uh, so, um, as I told you when I was emailing you, I'm excited for you because you know, I think the Lord's really going to use you. you know, you're going to die climbing, right? That's what I want to do. Amen. 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 I mean, you were sandbagging a little bit leading up to this. You could have, 